Hello everyone, you're watching a Team Deathmatch gameplay on the map Hotel. I go 19 and 1, so it's a pretty quick TDM bash. Super fun match to watch, and we got a super fun topic as well, that being who is the best player in Gears of War 4. A very provocative question, and I think people ask it a lot and answer it a lot, so I thought it'd be fun to do a commentary about. I don't know if there's necessarily value in being able to identify who the best player is in the game, but I do think there is value in being able to identify who is the best player or the top players in, say, a lobby you're in, just because it can help frame your gameplay in a specific match, which can help you uh, secure a win when push comes to shove. So that's going to be the ultimate point of this commentary that I'll talk about later, but I hate when people pose provocative questions and don't answer them so i'm going to go ahead and humor the question that is the title of this video so if you had a gun to my head right now and you asked me who i think is the best player in gears of war 4 my answer would be optic mental whenever i watch him play he's always dropping a huge amount of kills gets tons of points supporting his team well all the time and is very composed so just on the face of it optic mental would be my pick and probably a very safe pick i think most people would agree but if not him, definitely one of the pros that you uh, get to watch during esports. Obviously, they put their heart and soul into this game. They literally get paid to play, and they're playing all the time. So naturally, you would assume that they're uh, among the top tier players. Now, whether or not they are the best players when it comes to execution or even team deathmatch is another story. But when you get into those types of questions, you, you really have to kind of ask what the criteria is for evaluating who the best player is which i'm definitely going to get into uh, in the, the latter part of this commentary just kind of the framework that i work with uh, but you know it, it's a tough question to answer and it's also just a funny question to me in general because i've literally had people who watch my videos uh, say to me oh you are the best player in gears of war i have not seen anybody better than you I, you're literally the best in the world and let me just tell everybody right now i am not the best in the world i am not even close to being the best in the world you only watch the games mostly where i go off and do really well now i won't you know uh take this too far i think i'm a very good player i play a lot i think i'm good at the game but no way in hell that i'm uh the best player even capable of, of competing to the pros and quite frankly i don't think that there's too many people on youtube if any on youtube that i would go ahead and say yep they are the best player in the world no offense meant to uh, the people on youtube but it's just funny to me because i think their viewers have this issue where you know you are actively seeking out stuff to watch on youtube to entertain yourself you come across players that are good at the game and are displaying their best work you know the top matches that they play in most often on their youtube channels and then they start to form impressions oh this player is gets so many kills or sick at wall bouncing or gets dirty snipes they must be the best player you know people will think somebody who makes a montage is literally the best player because he got sick clips and that's not once again it's not to diminish that the players are not good i bet you they're excellent outstanding players but when you're asking who is the best player overall it's a bit of a harder uh, question to answer and i just don't think that it is uh is anybody on youtube so as flattering as it may be for some of us youtubers to to be told oh you are the best at this game you're incredible you know it, if you're like me you're you're taking it with a grain of salt and knowing you know when you think about the bigger picture no i am definitely not the best but it's a fun question that a lot of people ask and, and try to answer just because it's a competitive game and and it, when you're playing a competitive game, of course you want to be able to look at everybody else and say, you know, oh, I'm, I'm better than you at this or that or, or whatnot. So before I talk about my criteria for evaluating a player, I would love if you posted in the comments who you think the best player in Gears of War 4 is, along with, you know, what's important to you when you're, when you're evaluating criteria for who is the best player. So... Now let's kind of get into the the meat of the topic for me at least, and that's kind of being able to evaluate who the sharks in the room are, who the best players in the lobby are. For me, there is value to being able to identify the top tier players. If you can identify the top tier players in a lobby, you can focus your efforts on them or avoid them and, and save them for later or get them right away or, you know, do whatever it is you feel you need to do to kind of shut down their gameplay, gang up on them if you need to, you know? There's nothing worse than having the best player have free reign in a match to kind of play the way he wants to because everyone is so afraid or just unable to to kind of uh, tackle him on their terms. So for me, when I think of off the bat, when I tr evaluate players, movement is obviously a, a huge deal to me. If a player is moving well, I assume that they have good knowledge of the game. 
Uh, but that's only a very basic way to determine if a player is good off the bat. Uh, there's a lot of brain dead people who wall bounce senselessly and literally put themselves in shitty positions. I, it's like this new f uh, fad in gears that where everybody just like bounces on two walls like crazy because they think it looks so cool and then they just, you know, waste time. They don't get to places faster. They don't support their teams. They're literally playing to look flashy instead of to win. So, you know, take what I say lightly. Movement can be a determinative, determinative of who is a good player. But I wouldn't say it's something you can use by itself. I think decision making, which is harder to evaluate, is a huge part of what makes a player good at cures, you know? And that could be, you know, initial rushes. Do they throw good smokes? Do they know where to run? Are they working well with teammates? If you're able to evaluate if a person's decision making is good or not, you know, that's often a great way to tell if you're up against a, a good player. And then obviously accuracy for me is another thing. If a player is hitting a lot of their shots, using all of the different weapons, lancering for their teammates, it shows, you know, what they're, what they're capable of. Now there's some things when you're on uh, uh, your team yourself, or even just trying to choose players that you want to play with in terms of who's good or who's not, there's things beyond the gameplay that you want to be asking yourself too. Uh, when you're playing with people, you want to know, you know, are they people that are getting angry way too easily and are screaming and are frustrated, you know, that would make it harder to work with them and they would kind of bring the team down in a sense. Perhaps they are bringing the team down and, and calling out uh, other players. I, I've even seen a couple streams where where a pro who I will, will not name is literally just, you know, yelling at his teammates, calling them uh, very vulgar things and blaming everything on them. And that's not something that I would associate with uh, being a good player, or at least it detracts from being a good player. You know, I think you would be better if you were more supportive of your team and had a more problem-solving orientation. You know, okay, this happened. I think it was because of X. We should do Y, that type of thinking. You know, not you screwed up. You're an idiot. You suck at this game. That's not something you want to be hearing. And I think uh, the kind of way to categorize that is just communication, you know? What is the communication like from a player? Are they giving good callouts or are they just bitching every time they die and not being helpful uh, at all? And then obviously I think, uh, you know, another quality is just leadership. I, I find that it's good to kind of have somebody on the team take leadership if you need... Like, at the end of the day, somebody's got to call a shot and if you're going to make a plan. So being able to not only strategize but call a shot and and lead a team and keep morale up can be kind of a big deal in evaluating who's who's a good player or not and that's kind of like the role that i fill with my team and my friends just because they know i enjoy strategizing and i guess they trust me enough so and it's fun it's it's not there's no like power dynamic or anything it's just one of those uh things where you know somebody's got to take ownership and kind of call the shots so those are some of the criteria that i've gone over that i use to to evaluate uh who's a good player perhaps you have some of your own that that i haven't mentioned but once again the value in kind of having these uh, traits to to look at is that not only can you determine who's a player you need to watch out for that you're playing against but you can also pick the type of players that you want to be playing with for yourself you know so there's there's kind of two benefits to that and that's kind of going to cover the uh, topic in general so i've told you who i think the best player is i've told you what i think the qualities of a good player are uh, or or how to kind of spot a good player and now i'd love to hear who you think is the best player in the game and kind of how you determine skill level in this game which is uh, obviously very important and very fun. So thank you very much for watching. I'll let you watch the rest of this round play out and I will see you in the next video.